Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Yeah, the old clock says it's five o'clock. Beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. We got us a great big beer here. This is uh, from Carback Brewing and guys, this, these, these guys have been bought out. Uh, this was sent to me by Brandon C. down in Texas and he wrote me before he sent it and told me this was a different version than what he sent me the last time. This is the Bourbon Barrel Hellfighter Imperial Porter aged in bourbon barrels and he's attached another note here on the side of it saying this is release number seven. Uh, 100% Garrison Brother Barrels, so I think that's the difference on this one, and this is a 12.5%, and it was released in March of 2017. I've done this beer about a year or so ago, and it was either a 2015 or 2016, I'm not exactly sure, I don't remember, uh, but he said it was different, and I think it's the uh, the ABV is different, because I'm, if I recall, it was like 11% last time, and this one's a 12.5%er. And it's done in different barrels, from what I am guessing. Went to Beer Advocate, they don't even have it listed. And I'm sure somebody's going to type in, oh, well, here it is. Well, I typed it in and went into Carback Brewery and looked at all the beers, and they didn't have anything listed for the Hellfighter at 12.5%. They had the 2015 listed at 11%, but not this one. So, it's probably there somewhere, but I don't jump through hoops to find them. If I type it in and I go to Carback Brewery on Beer Advocate, and it lists every beer that they have listed for that brewery, and it's not listed there, they're out. It's like great beer, they're out. Uh, I was able, after multiple searches on Untapped, to find the 2017 edition, which is what this is, but they say no ABV or no IBUs are listed. I don't know why that is. This is a 12.5%. So, great big beer, 22-ounce uh, bomber. Uh, one you probably should have at home unless you have a designated drive near if you're drinking it out at a brew pub or bar or something like that. Uh, I don't know if they do any keg versions of this. These guys are out of Texas, I'm sure. Houston, Texas. So Brandon C. sent this to me and told me it was different. So we're going to do the 2017 edition here. Uh, and this one has all the information here on the side telling it's Bourbon Barrel Age 2017 March release. So, and this is July, 1st of July. So, uh, don't take a rocket science to figure that out. April, May, June, July. Four months old. Uh, <coughs> and the release number seven. So, they've done this particular beer probably with different barrels or different something for each batch that they've done. So, we're going to do this one and uh, see what it brings to the table. Final beer of the evening for me. So, uh, commercial description. Let's see what we have on Untapped. It said Imperial Double Porter. So, and these guys can call it whatever they want. Uh, or be uh, a beer that's valued to, they could have called it a style, or they could call it a porter. Usually, and I've told you this story before, guys, and I'll do it real quick. Porters were usually a lower ABV beer, uh, a dark beer that around the 1700s the dock workers over in England and stuff were drinking these style of beers for their lunch or dinner if they were second shift and there was a lighter beer, a usually a three or four percenter that they could have with their dinner or lunch and go back to work and not be inebriated. Uh, but now the American style is bigger, bolder, heavier, thicker and all that. So we got a 12 and a half percent porter. It is what it is, guys. I mean, usually those kind of ABVs are reserved for stouts. But they want to call it a porter for some reason, so we'll let them do that. So, uh, and since it didn't have this listed on Bear Advocate, and that's where I get the food pairings and everything from, we don't have that. So let's jump straight into it.
big time hiss. Seems to be very well carbonated for that kind of a hiss coming off the bottle. A little bit of smoke into the glass we go. Glassware that I'm using is a solid beer glass today, with my favorite tulip glass. And I tell you the food pairings and the uh, uh, glassware and all that, whatever glass you want to use, guys. I mean, appropriate glass is nice. But if all you have is a damn red solo cup, pour it into that. Don't drink it out of the bottle. Pour it into something. If you got a pint glass, pour it into that. If you got a tool glass and you want to get a little bit more aromas and stuff, pour it into that. It's up, entirely up to you. The beer police ain't going to come knock them on your door because you poured it into a plastic cup. <laughs> I like to look at the beer though. That's why I always pour it into a glass cup. Or a glass. Uh, over to the light. Mm, I'm not giving any at all. Looks like a stout to me, guys. A nice finger of head on that poor, very creamy, khaki-colored head. Let's get it to the nose. Oh, yes. Very nice bourbon notes on this. Excellent, as a matter of fact. Rich roasted malt. Maybe some caramel or toffee and brown sugar or molasses in there. Excellent bourbon notes. When, when I see something that's bourbon barrel aged and I get this kind of aroma, it tells me these guys know what they're doing and they're putting these beers in a first run barrel, something that's never had beer in it before. And they've aged it appropriately for what they want the beer to be. And they check it very often. Uh, and once it matures to where they think it is where they want it to be bottled and the taste that they want. That's when they pull it out of the, the barrels and put it into the bottles. And according to the aroma, they've done an excellent job. So let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Brandon. I appreciate it, my brother. This is exactly what I'm looking for when I see something that has bourbon barrel age on the label. I'm looking for this amount of bourbon in the beer. And there are a lot of them that have a little bit more than that. And there's a whole lot of them that have a lot less than that. Uh, some of them you can't even tell it's ever been into a bourbon barrel. So, excellent. Very well done. Two thumbs up to these guys for that. getting a hint of some coconut now and the more it sits in the glass and it opens up into the air and uh, warms up to room temperature the more notes it's going to come out. Some woodiness, a coconut, bittersweet chocolate, maybe even some coffee and some dark fruit. So, wonderful aroma guys. In, in a couple of minutes I've been flapping my gums. I can already tell the coconut and some woodiness coming out in the beer that I didn't taste or, or, or smell originally. That smells awesome. That is perfect. That's absolutely outstanding, guys. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Awesome job, guys, there at uh, Carbon. Very, very tasty beer. Well, let me pour her a glass out of the rest of this bottle and sip on this for a little while and see what we end up with. Pretty impressive beer right now. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Been sipping on it for about 30 minutes or so. Went very well with the Maduro wrap cigar that I was smoking with this. Uh, very nice bourbon notes, hints of vanilla and coconut and roasted malt, bittersweet chocolate, a little bit of hints of some dark fruit, not big time, but a little bit of hints there. Caramel, toffee, brown sugar. Excellent beer. Absolutely outstanding. Uh, I would buy this beer if I could get it here. And as Brandon uh, wrote to me, told me this is a little different. This is a different batch number. This is a 2017 edition. Uh, they've done several different versions of the uh, Hellfighter. Uh, and from what I've seen and read, uh, this particular one is the biggest one so far at 12.5%. Uh, 
bottled in March of 2017. Uh, I did a version of this uh, a year or so ago. Uh, it was either the 2015 or 2016. I'm thinking it was probably the 2015 edition. And they used different barrels to age this with. Uh, the barrels I used on this one were the uh, Garrison Brothers barrels. So I'm not familiar with those guys, but excellent. Absolutely outstanding. A great bottle of beer of the evening. The other half loved it. Uh, she's just like me. These, especially the ones that are bourbon barrel aged, and you can smell and taste that bourbon in it. Outstanding, outstanding. Wow, wonderful aroma on this beer. Whew. I could smell that all day. Wow, delicious. Final chug, guys. Cheers. delicious. And guys, like I told you earlier, the fridge is getting a little thin. The closet's got some big beers in here like this uh, that uh, Brandon and uh, some of the other guys, Rico and some of the other people have sent me that are huge beers like this. I'm going to probably be doing some of those here coming up. Uh, and we're going to probably drop back to one a day, maybe even less than that. Uh, like I told you, I've been doing this almost seven years now and uh, kind of just about done everything that can be done. And uh, we're going to do some big beers and I'll probably drop back to at least one a day from here on out. Uh, unless something changes and I get a big beer mouth package from somebody, whatever. Uh, I've done just about every kind of style of beer and stuff that's been done and I appreciate everything that everybody sends me. Uh, but we're going to uh, start getting into those and I usually do two or three beer reviews a day and start off with a lighter beer, like pale ale or half a bison and then, or either an IPA or a double IPA and finish up with an imperial style or, or uh, a porter in this, as in this one is and I'm not going to be doing two or three 14, 12 to 14 percenters a day. I'm not going to do that. So. Uh, you may start seeing uh, a few more of the bigger beers uh, in the next uh, weeks or, or, or a month or so and then may wind down a little bit. So we'll see. And by the time uh, August gets here, we'll see what's happening and what beers have come in. Uh, but I'll still be pulling stuff out of the closet and maybe out of the fridge downstairs and, and do some of those. Just to, just to have some reviews out there because I don't think there's a lot of people that that do two beer reviews a day or even one a day. Sometimes they're only one or two a week or whatever. They may come to that here. So, But anyway, uh, if you've had this one, I thought this was absolutely outstanding, guys. To me, this is a 10 beer. Uh, I can't think of a single reason not to give it a 10 or anything that I would say to make this beer better. It's absolutely awesome. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I would buy it here if I could get it here. And I'm sure this was not a cheap beer to buy. Brandon C., thank you again, my brother. I do appreciate it, sir. Guys, if you've had the 2017 edition, this is batch number seven. Let me know what you think of this beer. Come on back tomorrow. Let's see what's in the fridge. See you then.